Hey there, family. Just a quick update. Uh, I'm out of my house now for, oh, it's been two months. And I just wanted to share this with you, this, this, this sort of drama or experience I'm going through is that the more I try to emanate or illustrate or live in a way and have relations in a way um, that is in alignment with thy will, great spirit, not not my will, and with consideration first and foremost for the seven future generations. Um, especially on this calendar of fake linear time according to Caesar and the associated pedophiles in the Catholic Church, specifically Pope Gregory, you know, Gregorian calendar. <laughs> we covered that on some other videos. But, um, anyhow, yes, a lot of Agent Smith activity, especially, you know, leading up to this, this new year, this new world that uh, we transition from, you know, first we transition our beliefs, right? And, um, you know, down here in what we call the Mesoamericas goes from the north down to the central and South America. Um, we consider that this is, uh, I guess, like a, a new world, right? It's like a, a new cycle. <laughs> And rightly so, if we even apply that to a Caesar's calendar of fake time. And let's say, for example, we apply that to this place that we call Mexico, this place of the Mesoamericas, that is now referred to as Mexico. Um... Hmm. So this character named Cortez arrived. <laughs> That's the story, right? I, I don't, Hernan, I don't remember his first name anyway. An invader from the north. <clears throat> In the year 1510. Uh, you know, on Caesar's calendar, a <laughs> fake time. So, if we use Caesar's calendar of the year two, what is this, two zero two four? Um, okay, so first of all, we go five hundred years because the prophecy says five hundred years, and five hundred in this case represents the final or the fourth out of four cycles of a larger slightly larger measurement of time what we would refer to as 2,000 years and then that is also can be e e extrapolated if that's the right word into eastern calendars of measurement of time like uh, yugas for instance right and so we can, just if we want to, on any calendar, really. And it's written in the stars. It just is. 
um, is part of the prophecies of the ancestors all over the world. And, you know, like it or leave it. <laughs> it's just the way it is. So I wanted to just briefly mention this about the 500-year prophecy because, um, you know, I do recall the memory on both sides of the polarity or both sides of the matupsum, the exchange of energy. And so essentially, for those that aren't familiar with the 500-year prophecy, it indicates that well, here, in this part of the world. Every part of the world has a different way to tell the story, but it basically says that, um, you know, when, when, when the conquistadors arrived, because that's the final act on the stage of this devolutionary exploration, that when the conquistadors arrive, uh, to just wait mm, 500 years, that's what it said. 500 years we wait and we return with the consciousness of our more holistically intelligent ways of perceiving things, you know, like, like, you know, like the ancient ancestors used to, you know, they, they knew how to read the stars and they knew how to work with the sacred geometry of the universe and uh, tap into all their magic and stuff, right? <laughs> Anti-gravity vehicles and free energy devices, absolutely. Um, but the point I want to make with the 500-year prophecy is that based on my personal recollection in the, like, um, the memory of the one who projects in many forms to have the experience of many. <laughs> and uh, in this particular experience, I recall um, both sides of the story um, being the, the oh, how do they call it, the conquistador or the colonialists or the invaders or whatever. And um, I, I, I recall that when they landed on the shore, there wasn't a very long period of time if in many cases there was no um, amount of time allowed at all before the slaughter began. I don't recall, in most cases, the conquistadors sitting around giving us year after year, decade after, now is 14 years down here in this part of Mesoamerica with the Cortez story. It's 500 years from there, well, do the math, 15 times plus 500 is 20. 2010 and it's 2024 20, on Caesar's calendar. So it's two cycles of seven into this time that we have um, permission or authority of the Great Spirit, you know, as it's written in the stars and told by the stories of our ancestors. And now is the time for us to decide and um, and perceive things with the heart of a child, right? <laughs> with it, don't make excuses for silliness and just you know return to the basics. Anyway, so I mention this because isn't it ironic? Um, this kind of ties into a video I did before, which I haven't yet posted. And it was uh, a rather uh, emotional <clears throat> recollection of one of the first times I ever encountered a Mexican in my so-called country. Um, 
you know, that wasn't like a, a resident or a, had citizenship or had been born there or that I worked with or something like that. He was just a, 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 just a poor guy coming on over to do some work and some people were, well, just one guy, just one guy was harassing him, but the entire fucking place was allowing it. So, you know, that's the only thing that evil needs to persist in this world is for good men and women to do nothing and say nothing in the, in the presence of evil. And so it violated me on multiple levels to see this person who was very vulnerable and feeling rather helpless and did not even speak English and he was being berated by this drunk man in this public place and I was in yeah well you'll have to see the video but basically I remember I didn't give a shit at that point what this guy's so called nationality or whatever was that I just saw what was right and what was wrong what felt right and what felt wrong and I acted upon it and It's ironic that um, <laughs> here I am, this so-called gringa, down here uh, in the Mesoamericas, having only recently been introduced to the very rich and beautiful stories in this part of the world. And, um, you know, in the whole Camino Rojo and everything like that, where we say... Aho Matakiyase, I do what I do for all my relations and, uh, you know, and some folks, they, they grow up with this and so they don't realize the value of it, like they don't honor and respect it in the way that someone who's been searching their whole life and turning over every rock and reading every book and looking into every so-called religion and faith and other spiritual practice and then and then arriving at this beautiful uh, tradition of the First Nations people and uh, yeah so I'm down here doing my best to emanate that and uh, and not being attacked by <laughs> the drunk it's, it's like a role reversal and so I know my brother it's not that it's, I'm not saying the guy's like the guy I encountered in the public place in defense of this Mexican man many many years ago that man was being confronted by a drunk I mean he literally had like a fifth of some kind of I don't know what they call it it's like a bottle of whiskey or something a bottle of something alcohol But what I mean by drunk is drunk on power in this case. It's, a, it's, a, it's the same inebriation that I encountered in this public place when I came to the defense of a Mexican man whom I didn't even know, but I still did that, and I believe he is with me now uh, because I am over here in Mexico, and I am being attacked by those who are drunk on power because they have a lot of money and they believe that they um, have power because they have money <clears throat> and um, they have been and continue to be very violent criminally minded quite literally violent psychopaths <laughs> and um, it's a tough process that I'm going through and uh, I just wanted to make a note of that that uh, you know like this irony if you will this, whatever, <laughs> this experience that I had with Mexican who is vulnerable in my country and this experience I'm having down here which is the polar opposite of that and um in the divine order of things, right? And uh, also wanted to just make note of the fact that, you know, I don't really recall 
the conquistadors sitting around, sitting around waiting, in most cases, 14 years, because that's what it is down here in Mexico, yo. Up north, it's even more. Hmm? It was 1992 up north, that 500-year prophecy, right? So down here, it was 14 years ago, and I don't remember. Mm -mm. No, I don't. Not in most cases do I remember the conquistador saying, Oh, look, hey, everybody, we're here, and it's our time to act on the stage, and... But don't worry, take your time. Take your time, get yourself prepared, gather up all your things if you don't wish to um, be raped and killed and slaughtered. Um, go ahead and vacate your lands while we're at it. Uh, show us all your gold and silver and all your sacred sites so we could desecrate them and forbid you from speaking your native tongue and forbid you from all your ancestral rites of passage and sacred rituals and ceremonies and uh, here take these uh, unholy rituals on Caesar's calendar and stuff these down your neck and uh, while you're at it send your kids to our public schools and you know so we can indoctrinate a generation of slaves I, I, I don't recall the actual time that I was being drawn and quartered and gutted and murdered in many different ways when the conquistadors arrived. I don't recall receiving the, the notice and the time to prepare. I just recall that it began immediately. It felt like immediately or very close to immediately. It, it, it wasn't... It wasn't 14 years. Nope. Not in any case that I remember. So why are we waiting around? Why are we still giving our energy and attention to Caesar's bullshit? This legal system. Oh, look, and I have the money to pay this attorney in this, in this jurisdiction. And these thugs to come and, and harass you and intimidate you and and steal everything you have ever worked for in your entire life. Um, and look, we have the authority to do that because this piece of paper says we can. So as long as we continue to give our attention and energy to and participate in the unholy rituals and institutions, that the very same conquerors or conquistadors who came to destroy us, as long as it's just, you know, their systems, right? <laughs> As long as we continue to do that. We're literally sacrificing our own children on the altar. You know, the innocent children. They look to us to emulate. They look to us for an example of how to be in this world. And they are here to fulfill the words of our ancestors and the prophecies, as it is written in the stars. A little child shall lead the way. The child, the light of the world. And this is the year of El Nino. El Nino is known to bring hmm, chaotic weather patterns throughout the world. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the water does bring the comfort, the clarity, and the strength, or the force, or the I am presence. So, um, I pray that the water delivers the appropriate messages, the consciousness, the water of the stars, which clearly was manifested long before the water of the blood. Um, 
that this water returns in the way that is required or doesn't return in the way that is required for the people to understand who the real boss I mean, you know, as far as a human skin suit per perspective is concerned, the real boss is the water. And then Mother Earth. And we can't own her. And what we can do is be good stewards and leave um, a legacy and uh, do everything that we do in consideration of the seven future generations. And in this way, we live honorably. And therefore, we have no fear of death. So, just as a side note, <laughs> if I have to say it again, I'm not suicidal at all. Um, but at this moment, there are some folks that I have and have a witness um, to a third party witness uh, that um, observed a, a car with blacked out windows following me. I mean, these people are insane. They will stop at nothing. Stole my life savings and now they want to steal my house and they're willing to kill me for it. It's like, oh, all this, <laughs> this illusion. <laughs> The material stuff and without any consideration whatsoever how this is going to affect them as they transition through their cosmic midnight hour in their time of you know passing and making soul contracts and all that other stuff not to mention but they leave oh my gosh for the innocent children the Yes, it's true. The sins, the mistakes are passed on to the seven future generations. The mistakes and the good things we do, likewise, you know, so it's always a choice. So I just wanted to share that. Um, I know I've been offline for a while. Um, it's been an extremely difficult uh, process. And the more I try to detach from it, the more it's, it feels like crabs in a bucket kind of thing. It's like, and it's really kind of ironic again, because on one hand I see folks that are in alignment with and in resonance with my sacred dream, right? But then they're so detached from their higher selves and caught up in the, in the illusion because of well, partly because if they have skin in the game, and lest they forget that blessed is she whose womb is barren for her children are many. That's the book of Ruth. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, I just wanted to give that a shout out because, yeah, it's been rough. And that's why I haven't posted anything. I've been all hemmed up with... Uh, no less than, oh my gosh, I've lost count how many thugs now I've had to deal with. It's been 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I want to say it was at least 12. 12 different thugs and trespassers and... Oh, so I lost count how many threats. <laughs> oh, it's it's almost like, no, don't tell us this isn't real. Look at my bank account and look at my house and my wife and my kids and my two brand new SUVs and the Bill Hicks. Remember that guy? If you haven't seen Bill Hicks, you got to check him out. It's like, it's just a ride. Take it easy. <laughs> No, it's real. Look at my bank accounts. Look at it. I even have people to count my money for me because it's so much money. I can't count it myself. But I double check it because I count it down to the very peso is what he told me. And I'm like, hmm, one peso is like 
Well, at the time was one twentieth of one dollar. So like nickel. So you got billions of pesos in your accounts and you count it down to the nickel. I don't know what to say about that scarcity mentality, but anyway. Here we are. Ah, por fin. In the end of the uh, Kali Yuga and the transition from the, um, you know, the way that we choose to go. Whatever that might be, in whatever divine order is most appropriate for you. <laughs> As for me and uh, my dream, I, I choose the natural timeline. And, and I don't um, bow at the altar of false gods. It's not what um, motivates me. It's not my objective. <laughs> so... Anyhow, I'm just throwing this out there, family. Next time I see you, probably be working with some other engineers and folks like that to um, put together some anti gravity vehicles. Huh? That'd be cool. Okay, not sure if and when this video will be posted, but I just wanted to share that with you today, family. Ciao for now.